Imagine one of the key objectives of your immunization program is the control of yellow fever. To determine how your district is performing against that objective, you rely on quality surveillance data. But how do you know if your district is collecting quality data and investigating potential cases? As a district surveillance officer or as a supervisor, one of your responsibilities is to monitor your surveillance system to make sure it is performing as it should. Monitoring is the continuous analysis of your surveillance data to measure progress, identify problems, and plan and execute corrective actions. It also involves monitoring the results of those actions over time. To effectively monitor your surveillance system, there must be a set of performance indicators to measure your progress. A well-designed indicator is an independent measure that can be used in different settings so that comparisons can be made. Performance indicators of surveillance are generally disease-specific. In this video, we will look at how you can use indicators to evaluate the quality of surveillance reporting and measure performance of disease-specific surveillance. First, let us look at how indicators can be used to evaluate the overall quality of surveillance reporting. District medical officers and surveillance officers should routinely track the completeness of surveillance reporting from every health facility or Sentinel site. They might use a table like this to track each reporting site and the number of sites that submitted complete reports for each reporting period. A complete report would include zero reporting, where a zero is filled in on the report form when no cases have been detected. Also, track the timeliness of surveillance reporting. Record how many and which sites submitted reports on time. The national level establishes clear deadlines for receiving monthly and weekly reports. However, during an outbreak, reporting may be more frequent – weekly, daily, or immediately. This is a sample chart for monitoring active surveillance for individual sites on a weekly basis. Another way to measure surveillance quality is to map reporting sites to ensure that all areas are covered. Indicators can also be used to measure the performance of disease-specific surveillance. A surveillance system should monitor the incidence of key vaccine-preventable diseases. But it should also monitor how these diseases are reported, investigated and confirmed, as well as the responses to confirmed cases. This may require indicators to measure the performance of field surveillance as well as laboratory services. While indicators will vary by disease, they may measure the sensitivity or ability of the surveillance system to detect suspected cases of a disease, the timeliness of case investigation following the initial notification according to set policy, the proportion of cases from which specimens have been collected and sent to the laboratory according to set policy, the proportion of suspected cases investigated, and the proportion of cases investigated and confirmed. For example, for yellow fever, the indicators are the percentage of districts reporting and investigating at least one suspected yellow fever case per year, the percentage of cases investigated within 48 hours of reporting, the percentage of cases investigated with blood specimens collected, and the percentage of samples collected from suspected cases within 14 days of onset of illness. You can use these indicators to identify areas of weak surveillance logistics, training, or supervision. For example, a low percentage of cases investigated could reveal a lack of transport needed to conduct an investigation. You now know how to monitor a surveillance system by evaluating the overall quality of surveillance reporting and measuring performance of disease-specific surveillance. Remember, if the performance of surveillance does not meet the necessary standards, take action to improve it. <laughs>